It's a huge week of water polo. Thursday, we name the U.S. Olympic team and the USA women go 3-0 versus Hungary on the East Coast. All next on the Counterattack. Hi everyone, Greg Meskel here. Thanks for joining us on the Counterattack. Big week in water polo. Tomorrow, it's the day for the U.S. Olympic men's water polo team. We'll announce the roster, the 13 guys headed to Rio at 10 a.m. Pacific time on the deck of the USS Midway. How much more patriotic can you get than a battleship down in San Diego? The USA men's Olympic water polo team being announced. Follow us at USAWP. We'll have live coverage throughout the morning, throughout the press conference. And then next week, right here on the Counterattack, we'll be sharing full reaction from all the athletes and coaches that have been chosen, the 13, making their way on the road to Rio. From there, we turn to the women's Olympic team. You know the roster. We announced the 13 a while back, but now they've gotten a chance to play some games as an official Olympic team together. They went to the East Coast to take on Hunger in a three-game set. You know what happened in Miami. They went down to Ashley Johnson's hometown and ruled the pool, picking up the first win of the series. They kept up the good vibes going north to Greenwich and to the Bronx. Let's get you some highlights, and we start things off first with the Greenwich YMCA. USA and Hungary playing in front of a capacity crowd at the YMCA, and it was all Team USA early. Kylie Neuschel gets us started here, opening the scoring, making it one to nothing Team USA. From there, Melissa Seidemann on the power play takes the deal from Maggie Steffens, 2-0. But hang on, Hungary battling back here. Or Solia Tokac tying the game here at 2-2 as the Hungarians trying to keep pace. Now we move along in the game, third quarter. After Rachel Fatal had assisted Maddie Musselman, now it's Fatal scoring on her own, 4-2. From there, Hungary again trying to keep pace. Dora Zagan on the power play makes it 5-3. But too much Team USA in this one. Kelly Gilchrist will score on the redirect, 7-3. And then not too long after, Fatal on the dish to Courtney Mathewson, make it 8-4. Team USA is rolling. Now we go fourth quarter action. The powerful center, Cammie Craig, will score on the catch and release. Versatile from around the goal, 9-4 Team USA. Rita Keschie here on the power play. She'll score, making it 9-5, but Team USA always had an answer. Courtney Mathewson making it 10-6 here for Team USA. And then K.K. Clark will seal the deal, scoring here with 43 seconds left to make it 11-6. That's your final. Team USA takes the victory in Greenwich. Afterwards, Maggie Steffens on the win in the Nutmeg State. Yeah, the win was great. Hungary is obviously an incredible team. They're one of our top competitors, and they're a very talented, physical, fast-paced, um, smart team. So we have to deal with all of that in, uh, in a game, and I think we handled it really well. I think Sammy Hill stepped up big today, had some great blocks. Courtney Mathewson stepping up with some big goals. So I think all around we focused on our teamwork, and that definitely showed, but we know that Hungary is going to be – the, one of our toughest competitors, so we got to be ready every time we play them. So from Greenwich, we go just a little bit south to the Bronx and New York, Fordham University playing host for the finale of USA and Hungary. This time, Hungary came out on top early. Rita Kestee scoring to open the match. 1-0 Hungary leads. Not long after, Maggie Steffens, she has an answer, tying it here at 1-1. After Hungary went back in front 2-1, KK Clark ties it here 2-2. Now we go second quarter. Kylie Neuschel will get the opportunity on the penalty shot and then assist Maggie Steffens for her second goal. Just like that, Team USA ahead 4-2, to two, two straight there to open the second. After that, Kestie would close the second with a penalty shot, and we have ourselves a game 4-3 to three as we go into halftime. Third quarter action, after Steffens opened the third with a goal to make it 5-3, Courtney Mathewson scores here, an even strength tally to make it 6-3. 6-3 Team USA, Hungary rallying once more. Barbara Buyaka scoring, followed by the Cal Bear, Anna Illich, to make it a 6-5 game. But again, the United States turning to that versatile offense. Kelly Gilchrist on the dish from Rachel Fatal delivers the nice lob, 8-5, Team USA in front. They re-extend the lead out to three. Fourth quarter, after Hungary closed the third with a tally, Maddie Musselman opens it with a penalty shot score of her own to make it 9-6. Dora Antal, another Cal Bear on this Hungarian team, scores one last goal at the 5:15 mark to make it 9-7. Hungary would not score again. Team USA able to take over from there. Cammy Craig on the power play closes out the match, closes out the series with this score, 10-7 Team USA. They take the game in the Bronx. They take the series 
3-0. Kelly Gilchrist afterwards on a tough Hungarian defense and how Team USA clinched the win. I think the most important thing is they're fast. You know, their counterattack is, is a pretty big threat of theirs, so we just definitely have to be focused and stay in the moment versus counter D. Um, I think we just kept fighting, and then, you know, they're a really physical team. This is the third game of three, so, you know, it was getting, getting tough out there. And, um, but we just kept pushing, and, you know, we ended up getting the win. And with a visit to the number one media market in the country, the coverage was intense. PIX11, Fox 5, NBC4, CBS2, and a visit to Chica and the Sprout Channel. With the Rio Olympics just over 30 days away, the U.S. women's water polo team, the number one team in the world, has made the trip to the East Coast for exhibition play. And in the process, they're showing fans that just like in London in 2012, gold is on their mind once again. You spend so much time preparing, four years preparing for an Olympics, and as it gets closer and closer, the Olympic spirit and the buzz starts heightening up, um, and it gets really exciting. As the only member of Team USA competing in a third Olympic Games, Cammie Craig knows that spirit better than anyone. The third time around, is a, it's a different journey, but um, just taking what I've learned from the past two Olympics and sharing it with my teammates and getting the girls as prepared as possible um, has really been my focus this squad. What, what is it you love about the sport the most? I mean, it is a physical sport. A lot of people don't realize how physical it is. Um, I don't know. I love I love being around my teammates. I think that's my favorite part. Water polo is a pretty small community, I'd say, right about now. We're not the largest sport, as we love to grow, and we are trying to grow. But um, you're going to play against people that you've played against your whole life. I've played against Maggie my whole life, and I finally get to play with her now on the <laughs> national team. So it's really fun. And Cammie, I've always looked after her because she was older than me. So it's, it's awesome to be able to play on a team with people that are you've always played with and around. Can you guys tell us a little bit more about water polo? Sure. Chica, do you like to go swimming in the pool? Bratlitz, do you like to go swimming in the pool? Ooh, look at that suit. <laughs> Chica, do you like to play in the pool by throwing a ball around with your friends? Oh. <laughs> now imagine, Chica, combine swimming in a pool and tossing a ball around with friends. Into a net like a soccer game. And that is water polo exactly. So a strong showing for our women's Olympic team. And before we get to our next story, you may have noticed a new addition to the set. Check out this official Shieldy doll. You, of course, know Shieldy as the official mascot of USA Water Polo. And coming soon, you can be the proud owner of a Shieldy doll. Not on sale yet, but it will be soon. So this doll is going to hang out here in this coffee mug just to serve as a reminder to let you know when it does go on sale, be ready. You'll thank me later. Now we turn to a big event coming up next week, July 16th. The USA Water Polo National Awards Dinner and our Olympic Gala. Really combining two awesome things into one. First, recognizing all of our national award winners for all the great things they did in 2015. And then, a send-off for the 2016 U.S. Olympic Water Polo teams. Tickets for this event are on sale. You can get them at usawaterpolo.org. So whether you're there to cheer on a national award winner, or maybe get yourself in a photo with an Olympian headed to Rio, there are many reasons why you should come out. Make sure you visit usawaterpolo.org and get your tickets today. While the Olympic Gala and National Awards Dinner will be a great event out of the pool, next weekend also represents an opportunity for some great competition in the water. The annual U.S. Open of Water Polo will be held in Southern California starting next Friday. Schedules for that event are available at usawaterpolo.org. And that sets the stage for the big event, you know what I'm talking about, the Junior Olympics. The world's largest water polo tournament gets started in Northern California not too long after the U.S. Open finishes. Visit usawaterpolo.org. Make sure you get all the information you need to know about the JOs. And don't forget, when you're talking about the JOs on social media, use that hashtag, hashtag 2016JOs. We'll be looking to see what you're sharing online. We'll share it right here. And we're also looking for great Junior Olympic stories. So if you have one, tweet at us. We'd love to come out and cover your team during the JOs. Now we pivot to one final story on women's college water polo, San Jose State. They've got a new head coach for the women's water polo team. Gabor Sarusi announced this week he's the new head coach, former assistant, now being elevated to head coach. Congrats there, and the Spartans have themselves a brand new women's water polo coach. Now we'll close things out as we do every week with our social media send-off. It's the best of what you're sharing on the internet, and hopefully you're sharing it with us. Use the hashtag counterattack. Make sure you follow us at USAWP. And we start things off first with something Olympics related, not water polo, but nails. Check out this Olympic caliber nail design shared to us by Miami Swim Time. 
They got a water polo ball in there, some Olympic rings. That's a strong nail design there. If you have some cool water polo nails, take a photo, send it in. We do the Flop Friday, we could do nails. It could be Nail Tuesday. I don't know. Get on it. From there, club championships, lots of teams taking part in this. Congrats to a couple of squads that brought home the title. CC United in the 14 and under division, thanks to Karen O39 for sharing this photo. And then Vanguard in the 12U division, thanks to VG Water Polo. From there, back to the East Coast, the women's Olympic team got a chance to meet with fans that came out to see them at some different venues. They don't get a chance to go to these spots all that often. At Fordham, Patrick Hughes Jr. sharing on Twitter as one lucky fan was able to hang out with a couple of the athletes after the game. And then from there to Greenwich, more athletes getting to hang out at the YMCA and take photos, get autographs. Thanks, P.S. Farb, for sharing. And now we turn to priorities. Do you watch water polo or something else other than water polo? Thankfully, Tober2Baby via Twitter has the right idea. Water polo, the first screen, soccer in the distance. No offense to soccer, but obviously we're about water polo here. Now some Flop Fridays. These continue to impress a couple of entries this week. Foothill Flop Friday. Thanks for sending this in. The one issue here is everyone jumps in at the same time. Hard to tell who had the best flop, but we like the spirit. After that, Pacific Water Polo on the James Graham Twitter account. Going to be straight up here. There's not a lot of flops. This is mostly dives. Some guy jumps sideways. Not a lot of flopping going on here. Tough to really feel the Flop Friday vibe. Mitch FO3, this is huge. Three clubs at once taking part in Flop Friday. This video is about a minute long. This comes to us from Michigan, and there are a lot of committed floppers here. This may be, given the amount of athletes taking part and just the overall length of the video, our largest collection of committed floppers for a Flop Friday. Nice job to you guys in Michigan. Shot of the week here from Vlada Mooney on Twitter. This has got to get on SportsCenter. The old spinning backhand off the diving board. That was amazing. Athletes getting to hang out with Tony and Merrill, a couple of Olympians for Team USA at Pepperdine at a recent camp. How about Samson the Doodle? You guys into Labradoodles? Well, Samson the Doodle is one of the most famous Labradoodles out there, if not the most famous one. Sharing this image on Instagram. Their account, Samson the Dude, they made the trip to Greenwich to hang out with Team USA on their way down to the Bronx. And last but not least, 4th of July, this past weekend, everyone had Monday off, hopefully, for the holiday. Jesse Smith was down at Coronado. He shared some fireworks via his Instagram account, Go Smith Now. And that was the best of what we saw on social media this week. Don't forget to share the best of what you're doing in the water polo community. Use the hashtag counterattack, and we'll share it right here on the show. That's going to do it for us this week on the counterattack. Don't forget, tomorrow... Olympic team named for men's water polo. And in the meantime, when you're on the counterattack, look weak side.